Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Bath Talks. Today we're going to talk about science again. You know that I love to talk about science and we're going to talk about evolution a little bit. Uh, the way I'm going to start getting into this conversation is to talk about Kurt Cameron from the television show Growing Pains. Now, many of you probably already know this, but Kurt Cameron uh, used to be a sitcom star and now he's a very religious person who has strong opinions about evolution and science in general and will sometimes pick fights with like Stephen Hawking and, and uh, other scientific minded people. And the joke I always like to say is, I can't imagine ever being in a conversation with Stephen Hawking and going, ho oh, ho, oh, hold on a minute Stephen Hawking, let's see what Kurt Cameron from Growing Pains has to say. But it's fine, we can all think the things that we think, it's just that I think that the things he thinks are destructive because he has too much of a platform. I'm always a little upset when people have dumb opinions and a platform. Lots of people have dumb opinions, but uh, some people's dumb opinions has a farther reach than they probably should have. And in particular, Kurt Cameron is very anti the idea of evolution. Let me put this on the table early. Evolution doesn't disprove God. So if you are feeling reticent about this conversation because God is important to you, just remember that God isn't really part of this conversation. Whether or not there is a God is a different conversation from just a conversation about understanding evolution. So today I'm not challenging the existence of God, I'm not challenging your faith, we're just talking about science. Uh, there's this video that Kurt Cameron is a part of with another man uh, called Way of the Master. And Way of the Master is a series of videos that's supposed to uh, show you how to defend creationism and supposed to spread the faith. And there's this pretty famous video where he's talking to a man who puts forth the idea that proof of God's creation is the banana. And he said, you can look it up, by the way, and just watch the video. It's pretty funny. Um, unintentionally so, of course. And what he says is, the banana is a perfect example of God's design because it's, hand, it's shaped like a handle. You can hold it in your hand. It's got a tab on the top. It's an easy open tab. It's perfect food designed by God for man. So it's proof of God. I don't know how he then explains the coconut, which then must have been designed by the devil because it's very hard to get inside of a coconut. There's no handle on the top. I'll be damned if I could hold a coconut with one hand. And uh, if I was living on an island with just coconuts, well, I wouldn't be living there very long. It would be a dead me and a bunch of perfectly fine uh, untouched coconuts because I don't think I could do it. Uh, but the point is it's a silly argument just on the face of it, given how many different kinds of fruits they are and uh, how many different ones that are not as friendly as God's perfect banana. But it also ignores the fact that the banana that we have is man-made, not God-made. And in fact, if you actually look into the history of the banana, you discover that the banana is a good example of natural selection and um, also man learning to manipulate his environment as he becomes more understanding of the forces at work that cultivate plants and stuff. It's kind of cool. Uh, the banana uh, that we have today goes back some 10,000 years. Not the exact banana, but we've been cultivating bananas as a species for about 10,000 years. Uh, Indonesia, Southeast Asia are thought to be where the first like modernish bananas originated. And but when I say modern, I mean the seeds that eventually led to the banana we have, not wild bananas. So we've been cultivating bananas for about 10,000 years. Before that, it would have just only been some version that would have been in the family of bananas that occurred wild. Uh, they estimate that currently in the world there are about a thousand varieties of bananas. So along with the great handheld banana that you see with a dull sticker, there's a lot of different kinds of bananas varying in taste and color and texture. Some of them you have to cook, 
because they're in the same family, plantains or the banana family, of course. Um, the other thing to know, though, the banana that God made wasn't very good for eating. It had a lot of seeds. I didn't even know that. I did a little research, and if you do some research on the banana, bananas were mostly a root crop. They weren't initially grown to eat the banana. They were, uh, they were primarily a root crop. You used the root because the banana itself had a lot of seeds. I didn't even know that. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. Um, they think that the cultivation that eventually led to the modern banana was initially an accident. You know, you crossed one seed with another and then you got, oh, the fruit, as we started to grow it, started to become a fruit that was more edible. And as we noticed that, we pushed it in that direction as we came to understand farming techniques and crossbreeding and things became more sophisticated. So the banana is actually a really good example of evolution, you know, just resulting in some plants that we could eat and our own intelligence taking those plants a step farther. Now, this gets into what I think is the core problem with creationists. Creationists look at a banana and that's the end of their investigation. His whole investigation was, well, he went to a grocery store, he bought a banana and he went, hey, I think God made this. His curiosity ended. The other dishonesty is that's now been pointed out to the people who made Way of the Master, and like uh, typical dishonest creationists, they've now moved the goalposts. This is a particularly pernicious thing that dishonest people do, and it's very common in creation science. So what they said before was, God designed the banana. But then it was been pointed out to them that, well, no, God didn't design the banana. The banana evolved because of our meddling, because of our cultivation. And then, here's what they've said now. They said, well, what I meant to say was, God gave us the intelligence to cultivate the banana. So instead of conceding the point, they simply move the goalpost, which is all that creationists will ever do. You have to arm yourself against that kind of nonsense, because it's, it's just so dishonest. But it's also good as an object lesson uh, to see what happens with bad arguments, and how bad arguments generally evolve from a false assumption that never gets challenged. That's why creationism is so um, seductive to people, because it gives them an answer they like, and nobody within the circle that they occupy ever challenges a result. Unlike in science, where I could make a lot of claims about the banana, I could write a paper, and guaranteed, somebody smarter than me will challenge the things I say about the banana. Even if I'm kind of close, they'll go, well, no, this is actually the case, and here's the research that backs it up. Um, that's the, one of the things I hate the most about creation science and why I consider uh, I can respect a religious person. I can respect a Christian, a Muslim, a Jew, whoever. I cannot re respect a creationist because a creationist fundamentally is relying on dishonesty. You know, you might have faith in Jesus and that's great and I might just simply disagree with you but where creationism comes in is it's not a matter of disagreement. They're objectively wrong they're objectively liars. We don't owe them any respect. And they're also not very creative thinkers because they often say stuff like, I can't imagine how a banana would evolve naturally. Well, that's really your fault for having a small imagination because I can imagine a lot of things and you honest, honestly couldn't imagine a way. Considering the wealth of facts that you have to back it up, you don't even really have to imagine that hard. But, I mean, I can imagine lots of, I can imagine, like, different kinds of hats on my head. I certainly can imagine a different kind of banana, you dipshit. You can at least use your stupid brain to do that. Um, I'll use this to transition into another creationist meme that is a little more complicated. So sometimes creationists will use the same argument they use with the banana, but about the human eye. So what they'll say is, the human eye is so complicated that it could not have evolved by itself. If you go on the internet right now and look at lots of creationist literature, I promise you, you will read lots and lots of opinions about how there's no way the human eye could pop up naturally. Now, one of the things they'll say is they'll say, 
because if you removed even one part of the human eye, it wouldn't work. Because they apparently imagined that the, the pieces of the human eye evolved separately and then got put together in a factory. Of course, that's not how the human eye evolved. The human eye evolved from a simple, uh, useful way to use light into a more complex form to use light. And the fact that other animals have less complicated eyes and more complicated eyes, and some of them have the exact same kind of eye we have with subtle differences, tells you that, yeah, it's just an evolved mechanism. And it's really not that hard to understand. You just have to read it. I suggest you go to talkorigins.org. There's some really good literature about the origin of the eye. And I promise you, it's good for your brain. You'll just really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun to read. But what's even more interesting is imagine that God did in design the eye. Man, did he do a stupid job. He is a very incompetent designer if he designed the eye. It makes more sense to say it evolved because if it evolved, we can understand all the weird imperfections. The fact that part of it is backwards um, and you have to, as you grow, when you're a baby, you see things upside down, your brain adjusts. But the big part of it is because just the way your eye is set up is weird. Also, there's these weird imperfections, like my uh, people who, have, uh, who are nearsighted and farsighted. That's not a broken eye, by the way. Nearsightedness and farsightedness isn't a broken eye. You can't just say, oh, well, sometimes things are broken. No, that's just a poorly constructed eye. If you are nearsighted, the problem is, is your eye is too long, and so the way that it deals with light gives you a blurry image. And then, if it's farsighted, it's because it's too short and fat. Um, anyway, you can read more detailed explanations of that. That's just a cursory look at your eye. Uh, mine is terrible right now. I have notes right here I can barely read. And that's part of the, you know, the eye being terrible to begin with. Also, there's stuff you can't see that would be very useful. There's uh, bits of light that if I could see would let me know there's radiation. I can't see them though because my eye's not that good. So there's a lot of useful information your eye can't pick up. Also, you have a blind spot. Everybody has a blind spot in their eyes that your brain compensates for because you have two eyes. But it's stupid that it has that and not every animal has that proving it's not necessary in the design. It's just something that happened because of evolution. Every one of us has it. And it just happens to be the way it is because we used to be underwater and our eye evolved over time and it built upon itself. It didn't start over. Like um, a building, imagine a building evolved. If a building evolved instead of being built, like imagine a high rise evolved. If that was true, in the very middle of the high-rise, you would find an outhouse or you would find a hut. But then, of course, that's not how buildings, because buildings are designed. We knock down the old buildings and we start over. But that's not how evolution works. The uh, human eye is just pieces built upon pieces, evolved, evolved, changed, changed. So we've got all these rudimentary things that still go on and still cause trouble for us today. Um, Back to the banana, I forgot this point. I'm gonna go ahead and make this point too. Imagine somebody said to you, isn't it great that God designed the dog to be our friend? That's what it's like saying that the uh, banana was designed by God. Because of course, the modern dog is a result of some very nice coincidences with wolves. they kind of cool. So I've been all over the place today, but it's been a very long day and uh, what I would suggest to you, a good exercise, is when people do present you with arguments like this, ask yourself, what is the question that they are not asking of their own argument? And I would also say, spare yourself some time, don't argue with them, because they're not listening. But you guard yourself against stupid arguments, because you're better than that. And uh, science is interesting. So, go to talkorigins.org. Great articles about evolution, um, very detailed, much more detailed than I can get into in this bathtub as I don't have any of my books here. But go to talkorigins.org and certainly leave comments for me and uh, let us pray that our country gets back to where we appreciate science. Although by every study I've ever seen, including blind studies, prayer doesn't work. We can try though. Good. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce.
If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.